This area will be the long been a place of sailors and workers. The building of the docks swept all that away and made thousands of people homeless. Different docks tended to specialize in a particular cargo, often from a specific country or part of the world. And the names of the docks are often reflected that. The docks and their valuable contents were kept secure from tribal rules and their own police forces. But the areas around the docks became notorious for their slums, poverty, crime and disease. Charles Dickens, amongst other writers, brought the sometimes terrible conditions to the attention of the wider public through his novels. If you look to the left now, you'll see three rather striking circular green glass buildings. These are some of the first modern new developments we pass on our way down to Greenwich. They're an example of what has become of London's dreams. During the 20th century, the docks gradually declined. By the 1970s, they were a derelict wasteland. But some developers had the vision of bringing dockings back to life as a place to live and work. Sometimes old buildings were renovated. Elsewhere, like here, striking new buildings went up.
Corps, when shown the plans for Canary Wharf Tower, asked simply, why does it have to be so tall? Canary Wharf was once part of a busy system of docks built on a peninsula almost surrounded by a great bend in the river. The peninsula had long been known as the Isle of Dogs, and in 1802 it really did become an island when a canal was cut across the narrow neck of the isle. The docks here formed part of the 